After the release of Our Angels, Grimes was at the best point in her career and public relations, had nearly detached herself completely from her old way of life in Montreal, and was on the verge of completing yet another transformation to further personify the spirit of Grimes. She spent most of 2016 harvesting the fruit of Our Angels, performing at festivals all across the world, as well as starting off the year with the co-headlining tour with best friend and colleague Hannah. In June, she had a career best when she performed to a crowd of nearly 20,000 at the iconic Glastonbury stage, The Park, but in the same month experienced one of her lowest points when she walked off stage mid-concert due to a serious death threat from a stalker they weren't able to catch before the show, as well as suffering from a bacterial infection at the same time that limited her ability to eat and compounded her exhaustion. And, um, also, we just had a really disturbing thing happen to us today, so it's sort of my voice is shaking, it's just kind of This is the same tour that birthed one of Grimes' most meme-worthy moments, summarised in this article from Teen Vogue. When asked about what she looks forward to in life, she simply replied, Spaghetti. After releasing all of her videos alongside Hannah from the Acid Rain Chronicles in October, Grimes entered a period of not being as involved as she usually is in public life, something that would mark her 2017 as being the least interesting output-wise. Throughout 2017, she would drop small updates on her new music every now and then, and in August, she posted on her Instagram, I know I've been quiet lately, in the studio every day trying to legit make something you've never heard before, unexplored sonic landscapes. I need another month or two of pure unadulted creativity, at which point I will begin finishing tracks. Won't let you down. However, even though 2017 was one of her least outwardly prolific years, it didn't mean Grimes completely left the public eye, so here's a quick montage of her year. In January, Grimes started a burner Instagram account, Grimes Art Official, where she planned to showcase her own original artwork, as well as fan art made as a tribute to her. She also posts about getting a leg tattoo and a dog. In February, she releases the video to her song Venus Fly. In July, she appeared in a video in support of Planned Parenthood. Grimes ended the year by posting another teaser about new music by replying to a fan, just played label new music, they really dig it, so hopefully something soon. If you believe in fate, you could say that 2017 was purposely dull in order to prepare Grimes for the complete and utter chaos that was 2018. The year starts out pretty chill with Grimes doing a Twitch livestream to talk to fans. A month later, we get the first news that she is having trouble with her label and isn't being allowed to release in the way she wants to. She first edits a previous Instagram post to say, well, no music anytime soon, after all, music industry is trash. She then replies to a fan saying that she might release two albums soon, one final one for her label and another one that will be highly collaborative and most glorious light. She then went on to Twitter to clarify her comments with fans saying, I'm not allowed to say, but there are people involved in my career who would rather destroy me than build something. Indie music is more about egos than money. If you hurt someone's ego, they don't mind forgoing what you are potentially worth to them to take you down. However, everything is taken a notch up when an article appears in page 6 stating, Elon Musk Musk has been keeping everyone guessing about his love life, but sources exclusively revealed to page 6 that he has been quietly dating hip musician Grimes, who will walk the red carpet with him at Monday's Met Gala. The very next day, Grimes and Elon were seen arm in arm at the Met Gala. Immediately, think pieces were pumped and dumped across the internet, and fans were up in arms about the alliance they saw as completely going against everything they thought their idol stood for, the communist queen. Fans started the theory that Grimes had removed the phrase anti-imperialist from her bio after meeting Elon Musk, amongst a whole bunch of other theories to prove that she had gone to the dark side, which she later replied to saying, I change my Twitter bio every week. I took anti-imperialist out literally three or four months before I met Elon. I changed it from anti-imperialist to baby Wolverine. That means I love colonialism now. Seriously, what the... Throughout 2018, Grimes will constantly be on Twitter replying to people who question her relationship and morals. And James Brooks, her ex, though it isn't clear what happened between the two, he got to keep the dog and was eventually stalked a year later by Crazy Grimes fans who tracked down where he lived by using Google Maps comparing pictures taken in the backyard of his house. That is not good. What started out first as a harmless internet meme stayed like that for about a month. In that short period of bliss, Grimes and Elon replied to Twitter memes about their relationship, while Grimes also teased her music once again, this time actually playing some snippets. 
She also changed her name around this time to C, lowercase and italic, which is the scientific letter for the speed of light after having hated her name for all of her life, Elon T's. Everything seemed to be okay until... Okay, I do want to say I don't want to spend too much time talking about that. However, seeming as it did influence Grimes to become more guarded with the media, her eventual demonization with the public and will play a part in her decision to have fun with villainous themes in her album Misanthropocene, I thought that we should at least, you know, cover it. The idea of a collaboration first came up on the 3rd of June in 2018, when a fan asked Azealia if she wanted to collab with Grimes. She said she'd love to and Grimes responded saying she felt the same. They quickly made studio plans and Azealia eventually arrived in LA on the 10th of August, three days after Elon made his infamous 420 tweet and the same day that Grimes and Elon left LA to go to a hackers convention in Las Vegas. This is how we got posts like this and this. She eventually left Elon's house on the night of 12th of August and the next day told Business Insider that she saw Elon scrounging for investors to cover his behind after that tweet and that she waited around all weekend while Grimes coddled her boyfriend for being too stupid to know not to go on Twitter while on acid. Azealia did what she usually does and got messy, posting screenshots of her conversation with Grimes and also accused Elon of trying to blackmail her. The whole thing took a turn for the weird the next year when Grimes and Azealia were both subpoenaed by the lawyers of Tesla's investors who wanted them to keep all evidence of their conversations in case they had to testify in court, which is where we got this amazing piece of discourse. Of course, it's interesting as T for T's sake, but when you put all of the drama that happened to Grimes in 2018, her fans' criticism and anger at her relationship with Elon, the endless think pieces that came out discussing her relationship and the validity of her progressive morals, and all the stress that came with dealing with Azealia Banks, you can understand why Grimes would go on to make deeply cynical music, or at least try to make deeply cynical music, about the ending of the world as we know it, and why she might come up with ideas such as this. However, Grimes did engage in one more piece of drama with another artist in 2018, and that was... Poppy, I'm Poppy, I'm Poppy. Poppy and Grimes were originally meant to collab on two different songs, Play Destroy and We Appreciate Power. They were also involved in making this amazing piece of art. It's time for you to leave Hollywood, Poppy. No. Nobody wants you here. Why? Don't you know that everyone hates you? Why? You need to get out of here now. Stop this. Don't you know who I am? Grimes. You're gonna pay. However, behind the scenes, Grimes and Poppy fell out and Poppy eventually leaked the song Play Destroy, telling Billboard, I was kind of bullied into submission by Grimes and a teen of self-proclaimed feminists. We planned the song coming out months ago and she was preventing it. I got to watch her bully songwriters into signing NDAs and not taking credit for songs that they were a part of. She doesn't practice what she preaches. It's really upsetting to work with a female that is very outward about a topic, but behind closed doors is the complete opposite. It's actually very disheartening to people that are actually feminists and supporters of other females. I mean... Grimes responded saying, Poppy, you dragged me into a disgusting situation and won't stop punishing me for not wanting to be a part of it. I don't want to work with you, you leaked the song anyway. You got what you want, let it go. Fortunately, amid all the drama, Grimes did release one new song in 2018, We Appreciate Power, on the 29th of November 2018. Inspired by the North Korean band Moran Bong, We Appreciate Power is written from the perspective of a pro-AI girl group propaganda machine who use song, dance, and fashion to spread goodwill towards artificial intelligence. With influences of new metal and screamo, the song got mixed reactions from fans, but praise from critics. As she sped towards her next album, Grimes kickstarted her new era in 2019 with a very revealing interview in Crack Magazine, where she reflected on her past year with the media and her new found perspective and artistic vision. Without me doing anything, just by random association with other people, I watched my career and my reputation get totally smashed. I worked my whole life for this and now everyone thinks I'm so stupid. I was just sitting there incredulous, watching my life's work go down the drain. Reflecting on the media's recent interest in writing and dissecting her relationship and morals, Grimes said, Seriously? The New Yorker. The New York Times. Vice. You guys think you have journalistic integrity? What the? Now I can't read The Guardian because they've written things about me which are completely false. We really do live in a post-truth society. I know it sounds right-wing of me, but the majority of things that have been written about me in the past year were not true. 
She goes on to speak about her fans' criticism of her relationship with Elon Musk out of perceived political imbalance. I didn't realize everyone thought I was such a by the book socialist. My politics are literally insane. I'll probably go down for it in the end. Grimes also talked about how her past year had influenced her new music and artistic vision. If I'm stuck being a villain, I want to pursue villainy artistically. If there's nothing left to lose, that's actually a really fun idea to me. I think it has freed me artistically. The best part of the movie movie is the Joker. Everyone loves the villain. Everyone loves Thanos. Let's make some Thanos art. And that she did. A new teaser for Miss Anthropocene music came out in July when she took part in an advert for Adidas and announced the first single for Miss Anthropocene would be released in September. Violence, produced in collaboration with IO, was released on the 5th of September and was praised by critics and fans alike. Even though an unfinished version of Miss Anthropocene was leaked on the 25th of October, Grimes was still moving fast ahead with the new era, releasing So Heavy I Fell Through the Earth on the 15th of November and performing 4am at the Video Game Awards on the same day. Before Grimes released her new album in 2020, she completed one more artistic pursuit that acts as a preview for the future of her work in conceptual art. On the 5th of December, she took part in a DJ night slash art installation piece called Bio Hake, which included sets by Grimes, Sophie and Nina Kravitz. It was sold as a place where the well-proven anti-aging properties of raving have been distilled into the most potent experience available on the market today. It was also a chance to debut some of the AI work that Grimes had been working on, which included a collaboration with technologist Matt Amonetti, where fans could enter a shipping container remade as an installation room and listen to an artificial intelligence entity that had been exposed to Kim Kardashian's Instagram feeds and popular video games. Grimes called it an alternative to modern day meditation, explaining that it had been developed for people that disagree that nature is inherently calming. If you've grown up with the internet, your natural home is the digital realm. As a cyborg, too much exposure to nature and peace can cause feelings of disconnection, making meditation through natural avenues difficult. Miss Anthropocene was finally released on the 21st of February 2020 and received generally favourable reviews. It was given a score of 8.2 by Pitchfork and was called a frightening look at the many shades of human extinction in beautiful washes of new metal and cold electronica by the Irish Times. In the same month, she released released the videos for Idora and Delete Forever and the album managed to sell 19,000 copies in its first week in the US. Grimes has called it her best work so far. However, an event that has probably overwritten much of her life's work in the public's consciousness also happened in 2020 on the 4th of May when Grimes gave birth to her first child with Elon Musk X Ash A12 Musk. As you can see from this Google search trends chart, which peaks first in May 2020 when Grimes had her child and second in May 2018 when she first attended the Met Gala with Elon, Grimes has become more culturally relevant as Elon Musk's girlfriend and mother of the child than as a musician. The flurry of videos covering Grimes' life by mainstream entertainment outlets such as Nicki Swift, The Talko, and Entertainment Tonight also shows how she has suddenly become the focus of a lot of public interest and jealousy. Alongside that, there is a lot of bitterness and detachment amongst fans who see her as a sellout being deceived by the sweet words of Silicon Valley and a man a lot of the younger generation are starting to name, well, a rat. In October 2020, Grimes released her latest work, AI Lullaby, in collaboration with Endel, who used original vocals and music by Grimes to create an AI sound generator that could adapt in real time to a listener's location, weather, and natural light exposure. Today, Grimes is more controversial than ever, criticised by media and fans alike, but still bold in her artistic vision and stance that she is the same person that she's been all along. In many ways, I believe C is only now just embodying the spirit of what Grimes was all along, a relentlessly progressive experiment that is what it is without having to expose all parts of itself at one time, always fluctuating between different ends of the cultural spectrum and never bowing down to what is expected of it by the mainstream. It's as if she has reached the uncanny valley of Grimes and we don't know whether to accept her as a step in the right direction or whether we should just wait until she turns a new chapter that we find much more accommodating and pleasing to our natures. Only time will tell. To forever, Marie Antoinette, 4200 AD.